What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome to the first of Renmin's gym battles with the gym leader. Facing him is Reginald Gluck, the Alolan Executor, Damon's first Pokemon. And facing the Vestival City gym leader, Renmin has sent out Dusk and Soul. Let's see how they fare. So I immediately drop the dice on the floor. Soul, use charm. She charms the executor, so it has disadvantage to hit her. So I drop the dice on the floor again. Dusk and Soul are out on this wooden platform, facing... This absolutely massive tree with three heads. The tree regards them both. All of a sudden, it begins to glow as ethereal purple fire coats it and it slams its head into the platform. As it uses Dragon Hammer. Yes, that is an actual move that Alolan Executor knows. Okay, it does not hit Dusk. It's got disadvantage to hit Soul. It slams its head into the platform, and the whole platform shakes. They both have to make checks to see if they stay standing. Soul is knocked prone. Dusk's turn. She's gonna fire off an ember at this thing. Which hits. And deals 24 damage to this thing. Soul goes in for a tackle, but barely misses it as it pulls its head back, and she has to stop herself from going over the edge, and she does not have time to back up again because she used half her movement to stand up. Now, back to the Reginald Gluck. As it bellows... A small, almost like a coconut, comes out of one of its leaves and lifts into the air. It begins to expand, growing larger and larger. And then it slams into the platform and explodes. Neither of them are hit by this, but they once again have to make deck saves. And Dusk is knocked prone. Dusk is going to stand up, run over, and attempt to bite it, but it, once again, it sways away from the platform. Soul tackles it, bouncing off its forehead and back onto the arena, dealing a whopping four damage. Reginald Gluck surveys them once again and staring at Dusk releases a low bellow and these waves of energy emanate from it. Dusk is put to sleep. On Dusk's turn, she is going to roll and see if she stays asleep. She crits the save and wakes back up, but she does not get to attack that turn. Soul goes in for another tackle, dealing seven damage.
Reginald Gluck looks at Sol, who has been doing more damage to him than practically anyone else in this entire battle. She's charmed him and struck him twice. Dusk has only struck him once. He focuses on her, and his eyes begin to glow this vibrant pink. Soul is struck with a massive pulse of psychic energy. And she takes 15 damage. As Sol is sent flying across the arena, she lands right about over here and barely manages to get back up. She looks like she's on her last legs. Dusk runs up and snaps at the Alolan Executor, but the Alolan Executor sways out of the way. Sol charges in and goes for another tackle but misses. His gloop just slaps her back with one of his leaves and sends him skidding across there. Reginald Gluck, what will you do? They hear a great churning from the forest below. And suddenly, the very bright hot sun is obscured as this massive cloud of leaves billows into the atmosphere and then comes down hard like hail on the platform. It doesn't hit either of them, but they both have to make deck saves again to see if they stay standing, which they do. The whole platform sways and rocks. Dusk goes in for a bite and actually hits this time. Dealing 11 damage. Back to Soul, who's going to go in for a tackle again, but misses. Gluk, Reginald Gluk is no longer charmed, and he sways backwards, and uses wood hammer and smashes into the platform again. As he slams into the platform, they both have to make deck saves, which they do, just barely managing to stay on their feet as it shakes the entire arena. Dusk goes in and bites again. Dealing another 11 damage. Very consistent here. She imp... She clamps on and then quickly jumps off. And Soul goes in for another tackle. I can't wait till Soul learns an actual water type move. Ooh, and that is a critical hit! A nat 20. Too bad it's on the weakest move that any of my Pokemon know. She tackles. Dealing 13 damage. Its health is now down to Dusk's health. <laughs> this thing is powerful. I'm really glad I chose this to be the boss for this. Or one of the gym leader's Pokemon. Soul goes in for the tackle, but misses badly. Now, the fun can really begin. 
Gluk looks down upon both of them. Reginald Gluk, who is named after a character from the Laris region in Fording Party's D&D campaign. Please check them out if you have the chance. It is absolutely amazing. I've been binge-watching it for a couple weeks now. Please check them out. It is absolutely hilarious, and you will love every minute of it. This Reginald Gluk fires this purple liquid out of its leaves, and it rains down upon the field. Dusk is poisoned, and she takes... One point of poison damage. Dusk's turn. She goes in and clamps her teeth on one of the leaves. Reginald bellows his displeasure to the forest. His very voice shaking the treetops. <sighs> Saul darts towards him. But as he's bellowing and trying to shake Dusk off, one of his leaves slams into her. And she takes five points of bludgeoning damage as she nat ones her tackle. Struggling to remain floating above the wooden platform. Soul grimaces in pain as Gluk looks down upon them, shaking dusk back onto the platform. His head recedes. And then his entire body begins glowing vibrant white as he slams his face directly into the platform and uses Giga Impact. Dusk is knocked prone, and Soul is knocked unconscious as his head slams into the platform. Wood splinters, you can hear the trees groaning as they try and support his weight. Several vines snap, and he pulls his head back. He's got a big bruise on his forehead of one of his faces. And he takes 11 recoil damage. Soul is unconscious. Renman sends out Frosty. Gotta roll initiative for Frosty now. That's not the best. He rolled a four. Gluk. Reginald Gluk. It is your turn. He looks down upon them. The same purple liquid erupts from his leaves, but it flies up into the air. Hundreds of feet above them, it begins to coalesce, churning together and forming a dense sphere which gets larger and larger until it drops like a hammer and slams into the wooden platform, sending a massive blast of toxic purple energy in every direction. Dusk is hit full force with it, and Soul, or not Soul, Frosty is knocked prone. 
dusk, this is going to be a big hit. Do I have enough dice out for this? This is a sludge bomb from an Alolan Executor. This is... She takes 18 damage from that. Next is Dusk's turn. She goes in for a bite and hits. Let's see. Ooh, and just barely. As she clamps on to Reginald's face. His eyes roll back into his head. She has to quickly jump off to make it back to the platform, which she does. As Reginald topples backward. And with a sound like a hundred cannons going off, slams into the forest floor. Very well done. I'm impressed. I honestly didn't think you stood a chance against him. Shall we proceed to the next round? To be clear, you may use healing items on your Pokemon in battle but you will not be able to attack the turn that you heal. A similar sound to what happened when Reginald took the field occurs as these two trees begin to move. They rise up slowly, ascending above the platform. Following the thumping is a much softer thumping as a massive bird floats into the air above the arena, an entire forest on its back. This is a sparrow tree, much like the one that Renman saw on his way to meet Professor Ginkgo. Gotta find its thing. Okay. To roll its initiative. Oh. So, Dusk has an initiative of six. Frosty has an initiative of four. And Sparrow Tree has an initiative of one. Sparrow Tree is one of my favorite Pokemon. Not only does it perfectly embody the forest, but it is one of the few Pokemon to have four evolutionary stages. It starts out as a sparrow grass, a small green and yellow bird flitting amongst the trees. Eventually, moss and vines overtake its back as it grows to the size of a hawk and becomes a sparrow vine. Eventually, it'll become a sparrow tree, like the one you see here. But it has an evolutionary stage beyond that. 
Maybe you'll get to see it if you're lucky. Let the battle begin. Well, right away, Renman's going to use a potion on Dusk. Because she is low health. Which also negates her turn. She cannot attack this turn. Next is Frosty. He's going to go for an Ice Fang as he leaps up towards this gigantic bird. But his teeth snap just short of its talons as it zips overhead. Sparrow Tree. All of a sudden... A violent howl echoes across the arena as a massive blast of wind strikes it. Neither of them are hit, but they are both knocked prone as this whole platform violently rocks, being buffeted by the wind. As this massive bird beats its wings. Dusk gonna go for a bite and she leaps up and clamps onto one of its wings deals 15 damage And now she is going to make a strength check, and she pulls herself onto its back. Frosty's turn, he's going to attempt to do a similar thing, but he misses his teeth snapping short as it flies past overhead. Sparrow Tree is going to do a barrel roll in the air, if its dice can land in the thing, and attempt to shake her off. But it does not, as she just barely manages to hold on with her teeth as this thing does a rapid flip in the air, attempting to loot, shake her off. The Sparrow Tree, turning to the enemy that it can still reach, it lifts up its wings, and as it brings them down, a hailstorm of seeds bombards the platform. See how many hits this thing goes for. That's four bullet seeds headed directly towards Frosty. Frosty. Miss. Miss. Hit. Miss. One of them hits. Dealing ten damage to Frosty. Which, by the way, is a quarter of his health in one hit from just a bullet seed. Him and Dusk are sitting at almost the exact same HP now. Okay. As he goes in. Okay, that was the bird. So that's Dusk, who's still on its back. She has him grappled, but she still isn't managed to inflict any more damage is this dense growth of vines over its skin protect it. It's got like vines, moss, ferns, everything growing on its back. Frosty leaps up and manages to bite, but is not strong enough to hold on, so he only inflicts damage with his ice fang. Dealing another 15 damage. They're just 15-ing this thing to death. Oh wait, this thing's weak to ice-type moves, so that means that this is actually 30 damage. Still, that's, that's not a lot compared to this thing's health. Having just dealt 45 damage to this thing, it still almost has more health than both of them combined. 
I didn't design this gym battle to be easy. The sparrow tree is going to attempt to shake her loose again, but fail miserably as it keeps rolling single-digit numbers to do so, and she keeps rolling significantly higher. It's basically an opposed strength check. And uh, next up is its actual attack. The same plume of leaves rises into air as when the Alolan Executor used Razor Leaf. But something is different this time. Or when it used Leaf Storm. But something's different this time. The leaves begin to glow and shimmer. As they fly towards Frosty. And it uses Magical Leaf. It does not hit Frosty. However, it does knock him prone as it violently shakes the platform and they cut notches into the wood. They're impacting with such force. Dusk is going to bite down even harder this time and actually land it. Dealing 17 damage. It still has more health than either of them do. Frosty. Ooh. Frosty leaps up and is about to clap his ice fang down on one of the wings when the wing comes down and smacks him back down into the platform. And he takes 10 points of bludgeoning damage. As he nat ones his ice fang and is slammed into the platform. Things are not looking good. <laughs> and now it's Sparrow Tree's turn. Okay. I actually... Okay. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say, what do you do when they both nat one a strength check? Their uh, Sparrow Tree is significantly stronger... Then, uh, what you would call her. So, uh, yeah, Sparrow Tree manages to shake her off, and she gets flung down towards the platform and takes 11 points of damage. She is no longer grappling it and is no longer on its back. Dusk and Frosty are at the exact same health. This thing still has 38 hit points left. And now it gets to attack them both at the same time because its attacks are so fucking massive. It opens its massive bark textured beak and peers down at them with its Brilliant eyes. Its maw begins to glow. As the sunlight intensifies. It fires off a solar beam directly at the platform. The platform is bathed in radiant light. As this beam hits it, you can hear the wood sizzle under the intensity of the light. And I'll get back to this next episode. Until then, have fun, guys.